Now, here's your great verse, Psalms 139. Verse 16 says, all of our days are written in his book before we've ever lived a single one of them. That's shocking, isn't it? All. So that would be August the 8th, 2021. God wrote down somewhere in his journal, you'd be sitting in River Church. That's what it says. Psalms 139, verse 16. All of our days are written in his book before we've ever lived a single one of them. Wow, if that's not purpose, I don't know what purpose is. Now, here, I, I'll give you a secret. Tell everybody you can find. The real secret to success is making his journal become our journey. Find out what he wrote for us to do each day and then do it. I've been preaching 50 years, five times a week. If you'd come up to me and say, Bobby, do you have any information or advice for me to help me to be successful? Here it is. You ready? Swift and complete obedience. Do as quickly as you can, as thorough as you can, anything and everything he asks you to do. Obedience is better than, and I'll tell you what he said. He said, you tell my people, half-hearted obedience is nothing but coked rebellion. We got to be fully committed to what God asked us to do. And so Esther, little Esther in the Bible, her name means bright, shining star. So she appears at the darkest uh, history in Israel's time. But boy, she's in the kingdom, and she's there by divine design. And now, let, let me tell you, so, some of the people in the Bible that uh, you never hear about, uh, I esteem them highly. One of them is Vastai. If you, have you ever read the book of Esther? You open the book of Esther, you're right in the middle of an a, a eight-month party. An old king by the name of Actuarius is throwing himself a blast, man. He's got all of his drunk buddies there from 127 providences. You ought to study about Actuarius. His palace was nine acres big. The house he lived in, nine acres. That's what the Bible teaches. Anyway, Esther, you opened it up. They're in, a, they're in a, a middle of an eight-month party. It said they've been drinking the strongest wine and eating the richest meat. And now, I, I know we're adults, but usually in a culture you know, when guys, uh, these heathen men are about half tanked up, what do they want? Oh, they want somebody to shake the booty. <laughs> That's what they want. And it's no different now than it was then. Here's what the drunk, here's what actuary said to his drunk buddies. I'm going to get my wife Vasta in here. She's going to dance for us. So he told one of his counselors, go get Vasta. Now, I, I, I don't think Vasta was a believer. But guess what happened? She had morals. She had character. Because when the king's court guy comes in, they said, come on, mama. He wants you to dance for his buddies. She basically says, you can tell him he can take that crown and shove it. <laughs> now, I'm paraphrasing. She wouldn't do it. She wouldn't disgrace herself in the eyes of these lustful men, even at the king's order. Whoa, we're talking about how God sifts things to bring out his will. So now we've got king. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's living single in a double bed. You know what I mean? She's, she's divorced. She's gone. She quit. So they ran her out, fast time. She, she said, I'd rather keep my morals than be, be the queen of this court. And then so the counselor said, wait, we got big boy. If it happened to him, it could happen to us. We better get him a wife and get him one quick. And that's where the beauty contest happened, that Esther wins. Yeah. See, it's the coolest thing. And you hear, you, you, there's another guy interjected in it, Mordecai. Have you looked up his Hebrew name? I'm... His Hebrew name, it, part of it means little and insignificant. He's everything but little and insignificant. It's through his instructions that all of the Jewish nations were delivered. He's the one that told his foster daughter, Esther, you better get in and do what you're called to do and stand up for your people, Israel. If you don't, deliverance will come, but you and your whole family will be wiped out. Esther 4.14, very pivotal verse. Or who knows the kingdom for such a time as this. Now, we're in a time right now when there's a war for our nation. It's time to stand up. It's time to get off the sideline, front line, and take a stand. But, I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty wild when they want to arrest pastors for having church on Sunday. Yeah. 
And they're going to find him thousands and thousands of dollars and find every one of these people that came uh, 10,000. That's in America. We're not having that. I've read the Bible. It says, don't forsake the assembling together of yourselves, especially as you see the day approaching. God told us, keep it up. Remember, they, 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 it seems like the devil's always been trying to shut the church down. Don't you ever preach or teach again in this name. See, they don't mind you having church. Just don't have a demonstration of God's power. Just leave the supernatural out of it. And it said they, uh, after they said, don't ever preach or teach again, they went and just called a big prayer meeting and went to preach it. Remember in the book of Genesis? Adam, what, Adam wasn't looking for God. Adam, where are you? You know, God is the instigator of all this. He's the one drawing us. Draw me, and I will run after you. I want us to get into the deep things of God. I tell you what, we'll, we, if we'll work something out. I want to come and teach on the mysteries of God. I, want to, I teach schools, and one of the things we need, is we need to be taught the deep secrets of God. You say, deep secrets? Yeah, Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord, but the things that are revealed belong unto us and our descendants from now on. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Proverbs 25, 2. Guess what it says? I'll tell you. Proverbs 25, 2 said, It is the glory of God, God to conceal a matter, the honor of kings to search it out. I'll show you in the Bible where all of these, all of these mysteries are hidden. They're hidden in a person, in Christ. That's what it says. And we need to learn how to act access pathway into the secret place wow wow so anyway we'll look at putting on a school sometimes that'll be fun you say well what's one of your schools like different <laughs> we put what you call it powerpoints up there where you can actually read the verse yourself there's verses in the bible that you go oh wow i'm one, one thing that's returning back to the house of God is the awe of God. The A-W-E, the holy reverential fear of the Lord. It's coming back. Our problem is we're way too familiar with the God we barely know. But believe you me, he's about to reintroduce himself to his people. Remember on the uh, remember, whew, Isle of Patmos, biggest buddy Jesus ever had. John laid his head on the heart of Jesus. Now he sees him again. He hears a voice. He turns. He doesn't go, hey, dude, I've been wanting to hang out with you. What does he do? He fell at his feet, That's though right. he was dead. Isaiah, when he sees the Lord high and lifted up, what does he do? Whoa, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. Well, we're going to be reintroduced to God on a deeper level. I, I wrote about the pandemic before it came. For, for 20, this, this year will be 27 years on the Day of Atonement. I have a visitation from Jesus Christ. He'll tell me some of the things that are going to happen to write in a book called Shepherd's Rod. You write it a year in advance. So uh, 2019, I wrote about the pandemic. I said, there's a pandemic coming. It'll be contagious diseases. Is this right? You, you can, well, there, looky there. There it is. This is the, and this is one for 2021. And this is where we talk about my help comes from the Lord. We, it seems like mankind has a propensity to look everywhere else but to the Lord. And I'm telling you, that, uh, so this one is one, my help comes to the Lord. It talks about the availability of God's help. Uh, it's accessible to us and it's adequate. It, it's more than enough to get us out of any circumstance or any situation. 